So this is going to be one of the most important videos in my channel because I'm going to talk about integrating Unity and the Arduino to create some interactive projects or interactive games. For example, we can control the game using a potentiometer or we can use some other sensors. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the potentiometer to rotate this monkey. We can rotate it by rotating the knob from here. Also, we can control the Arduino from Unity. Here I have created two buttons, one to turn the LED on and another one to turn it off. So when we press it, the LED turns off. Also, we can turn it on and it's quick. So I think creating interactive games with Arduino is going to be a good idea. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. So first of all, I want to talk about the circuit schematic diagram. You're gonna need an Arduino board, like the Arduino Uno or the Arduino Nano. You're gonna need a potentiometer and an LED. And we already know how to use these components, because I have talked about it in our Arduino tutorial series for beginners. So for the potentiometer, we have three pins. We connect one of the pins on the right or the left side to the GND of the board. And the right pin goes to the VCC. And by rotating the knob, we are changing the resistance of these two parts. So the voltage between the ground and the middle pin will change when we rotate the knob. That's why we have to connect the middle pin to one of the analog pins like A1 or A0. Also, we're going to connect the LED so that we can control it from Unity. We connect the negative lead to the ground. You could also take a wire and connect the ground like this without using the breadboard. And the positive lead goes to the ohm resistor. And the recommended resistance is between 200 ohms and 500 ohms. And then we close the circuit by connecting the other lead to the digital pin number 11 so that we can turn on and off the LED. Now to control it with Unity, basically we are going to use the serial monitor and the code is going to be almost the same. So if you haven't watched my video about using the serial monitor, make sure to check it out. Unity is able to use the serial communication to communicate with the board. And to do that, on top I'm going to create the pins that we have added using const int. Uh, the first one is going to be the potentiometer pin, pot pin equals a1 next we have the pin of the led using const int led pin equals 11 and under the setup we have to set the pin mode for these pins by adding pin mode the potentiometer pin is going to be an input so that we can read the voltage but for the led pin we're going to use it as an output to turn it on and off by writing pin mode LED pin and the output keyword. Also, we have to enable the serial monitor. Let's enable it on top using serial.begin. And this takes in the boot rate, like 9600. We usually use this value with the Arduino. So under the loop, we are going to read the value of the potentiometer and we are going to print it or send it to the serial monitor or the serial communication. Then we are going to read it from Unity using the serial port. I'm going to put the value of the potentiometer inside a variable and call it read value is equal to, and we read the value using the analog read command. This takes in the analog pin. We have used it A1, and it's going to return a value between 0 and 1023. We are going to print it using serial.println the read value and later on under unity we are going to use it to rotate the cube but before that we're going to control the led as well by reading from the serial monitor or the serial communication to do that we use if serial dot available so this is going to check if we have some data that we can receive from the serial monitor or from unity in such case we are going to uh, read the value. It's going to be a character. And let's put it inside a variable cmd equals. And to get it, we use serial.read. And then we are going to add an if statement to check if it's 1, we're going to turn the LED on. And if it's 0, we are going to turn it off. So I'm going fast because I've already talked about this project 
in one of my recent episodes and I'm gonna focus on connecting the Arduino with Unity so let's add if cmd is equal to the value 1 we're gonna turn the LED on by using the command digital right which takes in the LED pin and to turn it on we use the high keyboard and we're gonna check if it's 0 by using if cmd equals 0 we turn the LED off using the low keyboard and that's it for the Arduino code before we move on to the Unity part I'm gonna test it from the serial monitor by uploading this code to the Arduino of course you have to select the right COM port here we have COM3 and the board is an Arduino Nano you could use the ESP32 if you want and let's hit upload you see that I have already used the potentiometer I have connected the right lead to the VCC or the 5V pin the ground to the GND and the middle pin is connected to the analog pin A1 and we have the circuit of the LED which is connected to the pin number 11 to open up the serial monitor we have this icon make sure that you are selecting the right baud rate 9600 for the Arduino and there you go we have the potentiometer value so it's a value between 0 and 1023 if you put the potentiometer in the middle you can get the value 500 and let's double check the LED connection so if you put 1 and hit enter the LED turns on and if we put 0 it turns off that means the serial monitor is working and now we are going to integrate Unity using the serial communication so we're gonna leave this code as it is and open up Unity if you want to learn more about it and how to create your own games I have a second channel which is called GD Titans I'm gonna put its link under the video description it's about using Unity to create video games but I'm gonna explain all of these steps first you have to install Unity and Unity Hub to create your own games and the interface is like this of course I have created a video on how to install Unity and how to create your own projects make sure to check it out and it is this video which you're gonna find its link under the video description so it's the latest one about installing Unity we can create a new project by pressing the button and it's really powerful it allows you to create 2D games as well as 3D games in our case I'm gonna use Universal 3D and let's give it a name like uh, Arduino Unity and we can put it anywhere for me I'm gonna put it under the desktop then create the project using this button now Unity is creating the project a few moments later two thousand years later and once it's done you're gonna see this interface so this is called the game view which is our game but if you want to see all of the elements inside it you can go to the scene view here by default we have a main camera that shows you the scene view also we have a directional light for lighting today I'm gonna focus on the connection part between the Arduino and Unity so first I'm gonna create the 3D cube inside this game by going under the hierarchy and right click you will see here we have 3D objects we're gonna use a cube for now and there you go it is in the middle of the screen you could rename it to whatever you want I'm gonna leave it as it is and if you want to clearly see it we can change its size or you could go under the main camera and change the Z offset also we have Y so I'm using the left mouse button to change the value also we have the rotation around the X to rotate the camera like this I think this is gonna be okay now to read the value from the potentiometer or add buttons to control the LED we have to create a script which is a code under Unity if you go under projects you will see all of the assets which are all of the elements that are used in the game here we can create our C sharp code by right clicking create under scripting we have mono behavior script and you could rename it to whatever you want for me I'm gonna call it Arduino connector without space or it's gonna give you an error 
But to activate this code, you have to attach it to one of the objects in our game. For example, we can attach it to the cube by dragging the script under the cube. And if you select it again from the inspector, which is this area, you will see all of the components, including the Arduino connector script. Now let's open it up by double clicking on it. And the IDE is really powerful. It is called Microsoft Visual Studio. And the programming language that is used is called C Sharp, which is similar to the code that we write using the Arduino IDE, which is the C++ language. This script contains two functions. The first one is called start, and it's like the setup under the Arduino IDE. It is called once when we start the game. Usually we use it to set up some variables or enable the serial communication. And we have the update. And I think you guess it. It's like the loop under the Arduino IDE. It's called over and over again. So to be able to read the value from the Arduino, we're going to use the serial port. And to do that, we have to go on top and add this library, or it's called a package under C Sharp, by writing using. And the package that we're going to use is system.io, then dot ports. And you see that we have this red line because this package isn't installed by default. To install it, you could go on top of it, show potential fixes, and install the package system.io.ports. You have two options, but I'm going to use a find and install latest version. And yep, it is installing. We are going to create a serial object to be able to communicate with the board. And the type is called serial port. I'm going to call it a serial is equal to new serial port. That's how we can initialize uh, the objects inside C Sharp. Also, we have this uh, suggestion, which you can confirm using the tab key on the keyboard. And this takes two parameters. The first one is the COM port that we are using. So the Arduino is connected to the port COM3. You have to pass it as the first parameter. If you have COM4, make sure to write it. And the second parameter is the baud rate, which is 9600. We still have an error because Unity is not recognizing the serial port object. And to solve the issue, we're going to change a setting, which is under File, Build the Profiles, Player Settings. And under here, we have this framework, which is not compatible with the command that we are using. To solve the problem, we can select the first option. .NET Framework and let's get back to the code and yeah, now we can continue under the start, we have to enable the serial by adding serial dot open and I'm gonna hit tab to confirm the command also we have to set something which is called serial dot read timeout that's really important and we can set it to 100 which is 100 milliseconds and it's the time that the serial will wait to read the command and under the update which is called over and over again we are going to read the value of the potentiometer and the value is going to be string so we have to put it inside a variable of type string and let's call it data is equal to and we use serial and we have this command dot read line but to be able to use the value, we have to convert it to an integer, which is the potentiometer value, and put it inside an int. And let's call it uh, value is equal to int dot. And the command that we use to convert a string to an integer is parse that takes in the data. I think this IDE is using some kind of an AI because it's giving me the right command in most times. Now we are going to use this value to change the rotation of the cube. So the script is attached to the cube. Luckily, we can access the transform component and change its rotation under this code by writing transform, which is the transform of the cube. And we have dot rotation. We are going to set it to quaternion. That's how we uh, declare the rotation, quaternion. Then dot. And we have error. Basically, this takes in the three angles, the X, the Y, and the Z. So if you get back here and try to change the Y rotation, so the Y is this axis, 
We're going to change this one. Maybe you could add a second potentiometer to control the x value. We're going to set the x to 0. For the y, I'm going to use the value. And the z, let's set it to 0. And as you know, the value of the potentiometer is between 0 and 1023. But the angle is between 0 and 360. And the way we do that is by dividing this value by uh, 1023 and multiply it by 360 degrees and that's how we can control the cube to save the script I'm using Control s and we can hit run to test the game so you see it's already changing the y rotation and if we rotate the knob of the potentiometer you see it changes and it is fast now we want to control the LED using two buttons from this interface and to do that we have to create these buttons from the hierarchy we right click, we have UI, which stands for user interface, and we're going to choose a button. This is using the Text Mesh Pro. Make sure to import it. And there you go, we have the button, and it contains two components. We have the text. If you select it from here, you can change the text to on. Also, we have these options like bold, we can change the size and the color. I'm going to use a white color. But for the button, let's use a green color for turning the LED on. Also, we can set the width and the height from the top part. Let's use 100 by 60. And we can move it along the Y axis. With the same way, we can create the off button. But let's move it to the left side. Luckily, we have the option to duplicate this object by right clicking. And we have duplicate. So we have another button. And to see it, you have to move it to the right side. And we're going to change its parameters, like the color of the button. Let's use a red color. And the text, change it to off. And inside Unity, we can tell the button to call a specific function once we click on it. And the way we do that is by adding this function under on click. So if you select the button on and hit the plus icon, we have the option to add an object which contains the function that turns the LED on. We have to create it under a script like this one and make sure to put it under the update or outside of the update. And I forgot to mention that we have to close the serial object once we quit the game. And the way we do that is by using another function which is called on application quit, which is called each time we quit the game. We are going to close the serial using this command. So I'm hitting tab to confirm and let's create our two main functions to turn the LED on and off. To create a function we use void and uh, we have to make it public because if you don't do that it's going to be private and we can't select it from the button. We have to add the keyword public void and give it a name like turn on and to turn the LED on we actually have to send the value 1 and the Arduino will read it and turns the LED on and to send the command we use serial dot write and we're gonna write the value 1 or send it and let's create a second function public void turn off and to turn it off we're gonna use serial uh, not close dot write and pass in the value 0 and I think that's all for this script make sure to save it using Control s the LED is not turning on and off because we haven't selected the functions from the button. So select the first one, which is the on button. And under on click, we have to drag in the cube that contains the script and the function as well. By going under no function, Arduino connector, we have turn on. The same thing for the second one. Click the plus icon, drag in the cube and select the function from the script, turn off. And now if we click on the on button, the LED turns on and we can turn it off. So I think that's pretty much it guys for this episode. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one.